So there's an argument. We haven't talked about forward stroke technique, but when you are paddling, you're using your torso, and we can get into this more later, but in a nutshell, something in the 60, 65 degree feather angle, so it's, it's, you see it's not 90 degrees. If it were 90 degrees, it would be straight up like this. It's less than 90 degrees. This one, I think, is about 60, maybe 65. Pretty typical. And again, don't agonize over those 5 degrees. It's like 5 centimeters. Don't lose any sleep over it. But 5 degrees is not that big a deal. <laughs> but when you take your stroke, now I want to now put that left-hand blade in the water. Just, just a slight lift and twist on my torso, and I'm lined up beautifully. It's very ergonomically efficient, whereas it's not quite as ergonomically efficient when you have it completely unfeathered. It's not a huge difference in efficiency. I say try them both, see what you're comfortable with. It'll take a few strokes feathered to probably get that, because you're going to want to do this. This is natural. Everybody wants to bicycle with their arms, because we know that motion, and it, it gets us moving in a bike. So you get in a boat, and you paddle just like you bicycle. It seems pretty obvious. Well, it's not necessarily the best way to paddle. You can certainly move the boat through the water, but you're using these little bitty muscles here. You're using the muscle of the triceps, the biceps. And they're short muscles. They're great for quick bursts, quick snatching of weight, strength, but they're not the best muscles to use over the long haul of traveling, which is what we want to do in our kayak, is actually cover some miles. Instead, you want to use the big muscles of your torso. You want to use the big muscles that run down your back, that wrap around your ab and your abdominal muscles. And the way to bring those into play is to get rid of your arms and think of them as just connecting the engine, which is your torso, to the paddling shaft. That's what you want to move, and this is where the power comes from. All this does is connect here to here. So now you get a whole different way of paddling. You're using your torso. And this is a great motion. And that, this is what's going to not wear you out. This is where you take and you level the playing field. It's a technique instead of brute strength. And it's what really equalizes paddlers. And I mean, I, I do a lot. Well, I originally, the first book I ever did was Sea Kayaking for Women. So it was a lot of, you know, talk about, you know, technique because so many women when they first started paddling were just like, I'm not going to be able to keep up, or I'm really worried about being tired, or I'm not very strong in my arms and my shoulders. And I'm like, that's not the issue. It's technique. It's the nuances of the technique. So it really levels the playing field, and suddenly it makes everything very technique important and paying attention as opposed to brute strength important. You can definitely brute strength your way through the day. I mean, any of us could. We can do that. But personally, I would much rather have good technique, and then I get to the place that we finally paddled out to, that you know, unexplored island or whatever it might be, and now I can get out of my kayak, put the paddle down, and I'll have new arms. You know, I'm not aching. I actually feel like I've got enough energy left to explore the island that I just paddled out to. And that comes from good technique instead of this kind of stuff. Because you will wear yourself out doing this. You'll get there, but you will wear yourself out. Plus, look what my wrists keep doing when I do this. They're getting quite a little workout. And what if I death grip them now? Oh, bad technique. You're going to really hurt your wrist. Whereas you bring the torso into play, you loosen up the grip, and you notice now that my wrist is right in line with my forearm, there's very little of this and there's none of this. This is the stuff that will get you. And very little of this because I'm not having to roll back to line that blade up. Instead, it lines up beautifully just by me twisting my torso. You can check yourself if you, you know, your life vest has a center zipper. It should be going side to side when you've got a nice torso rotation going. You can imagine there's a little belly button attached to your, you know, bell on your belly button. Belly button attached to your belly button. That'd be good. That'd be a double. <laughs> you have a bell attached to your belly button, so it's ringing with every stroke. It moves side to side. And you can't check yourself for that because, I don't know, there's some weird piercings. You could try it. <laughs> but, um, we won't go there. But seriously, you can look at your zipper going side to side. It's not going to feel natural, I'll warn you. You're not going to get in the boat in the first five minutes, have this really nice torso rotation. It is not going to happen. It's going to feel awkward, 
And you're going to say, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. No, you're not. You're rolling your shoulders. You're not moving your torso. It's why you're right here. And so you, that's where instruction is going to become important. You need someone to see you do it and give you feedback because